Hello and welcome to BitSplits. As you might recall, uh, in my last video I've shown the restoration of a Japanese Apple II J Plus computer. That's not the only Apple II I own. My very first computer was an Apple II Plus that I bought in the uh, United States back in the 80s when I was young. And that is the unit where I still play or test Apple II new and old stuff. All these old computers back in the day made use of audio tapes or floppy disk drives to store data and software. The problem is nowadays that tapes and floppy disks after more than 40 years are degrading and disk drives like tape readers are now prone to failures. So different solutions like floppy disk drive emulators based on SD card storage have been developed. For the Apple II computers, the floppy EMU card from a big mess of wires is actually the best choice. It's a floppy drive emulator that replaces a standard Apple II five and a quarter inch disk drive, where you can store an entire repo of Apple II software and select the floppy disk software to emulate with a convenient button pad and an OLED screen. The only problem with this card is that it's not visually in style with the Apple II appearance, so I decided to try to embed it in an original floppy disk drive. I had a spare, broken and unrecoverable Apple II floppy disk drive and I planned to fit the tiny OLED screen and a button pad in the floppy disk drive door, so I measured the slot and designed the part using CAD. Here is the part design process. And this is the 3D printed part as it just comes out of the printer. After part sanding and trimming, I made the fit test of the Bottoms PCB and OLED display, should they require any modification before assembly. Keep in mind that these are always custom parts and that even the Apple II disk drives faceplates are not all dimensional equal, so adjustments are always needed. Having tested that the part fits, I disassembled the disk drive to make room for uh, the floppy EMU PCB. Maybe you can avoid removing the back motor drive assembly since I initially planned to mount the floppy EMU PCB on the back of the drive. I later changed mounting position so it's way more convenient to place it in the front. So the only part that needs to be removed is all the drive door mechanism. Tonight, I just want your love about the stars. 
When the floppy drive is cleaned out, it's time to paint the little faceplate. The floppy EMU PCB needs to be connected to the switch plate and the OLED display LCD with cable extensions. An additional cable is needed to connect the PCB to the original floppy drive LED light, but since there is no provision on the PCB for the extension cables, nor for an external LED, I first had to hot air remove the floppy emu activity LED from the PCB and then solder the cable extension. For this operation soldering skills are needed, obviously. Then the cable extensions for the switches are soldered in place. The same applies for the switch plate PCB and OLED display PCB. Fixing the OLED display to the faceplate is done with hot glue. With all parts ready, I went for the final assembly. Fixing of the floppy EMU PCB to the drive is made with adhesive standoffs. The final assembly begins by matching all the parts together.
Here is the finished look. The new faceplate is barely noticeable. The disk selection is by choosing a file from the menu using the back select forward buttons on the pad. Then a reboot is needed with the usual middles on the Apple II. At reboot, the last selected emulated floppy disk is loaded and the machine booted. If you see an unfamiliar flash boot screen in my Apple II, it's just because I have a ROMX ROM extension that takes over the usual Apple II boot process. Monitor video flickering is just a video camera interference here. If you like my videos, please leave a like and hit the bell down below to support my channel if you wish.